from the south, huh? Man, we glad you here today. Another AMA. Welcome to South, huh? Man, we glad you here today. Hey everyone, welcome into another South Harmon Dynasty Team Review Show. I am Eric Vanek. If you don't know me from the America's Game podcast, you can follow me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. And uh, yeah, we have another uh, team review here that one of our Patreons uh, went ahead and purchased from us, Seanan. I'm going to help him here with his team. Um, if you would also like to purchase your own team review, please go to DynastyTeamReview.com and you can sign up there. You can have myself, Mike, Adam, or Koopa. Uh, review a team for you on any of your dynasty teams. You can also um, join yourself with us in the show. Um, we can help you review your team. You can ask us live questions about your team. We can kind of go through some more information that you might have. So that's available as well. Price points are different from each South Harmon member. Um, so please check the website there for pricing. So um, if you guys have any of those kind of questions, go on there. It'll help you. Um, you know, sort that out and go ahead and order a team review if you so choose. So, yeah, like I said today, um, Seanan wanted a team review from us, and I'm going to go uh, over here now. Special instructions for the league that he left us. Um, it's a start 11 league, lineup league, uh, 1.5 tight end premium, 6 point per passing touchdowns, minus 2 for interceptions. I'm guessing everything else is pretty standard, PPR, and all that. Um, how does he envision his team's future? I burned a bridge with the 101 team after I got his pick from him, but I have decent relationships with everyone else. Um, I've burned a few bridges in my time too, Sean, and so I, I know how that goes. Um, it was a super active league during the startup, but it has gone pretty quiet after that. Everyone in the league is a D-gen of some sort. I don't think any of them are shitheads, but they are all tapped in somewhere. Um well, that's good. That's a super active league. So they're going to be able to do some trades and stuff. Um, I'm finding a lot of my leagues right now, like rollovers are happening for MFL sleeper. If you haven't rolled that over yet um, or whatever it is, is still getting there. Um, combine's going to be starting here in a couple weeks. You got, um, you know, the draft obviously coming up in at the end of April. So that's when things are going to really pick up. This is kind of like the dead period time, especially for like me. I got to like, you know, not look at my team so much. Like I haven't really looked at any of my teams since the, you know, playoff started. Basically, I kind of needed a little break. Um, obviously, being a content creator does that, but you just need a little bit of a break sometimes. Um, so I think most people are like that. Honestly, they're gonna tap out for a little bit. Uh, but if it was super active during the startup, I think people will will come back and you can be able to trade and whatnot. Um, what other information do we need to know? Um, I punted during the startup last year and went young player centric. That's how I do it usually. I actually, I don't punt. I just draft good young players that I can compete with right now. You know, so that's kind of how I do it, but I get what you're going with. Young player centric. A lot of my picks from last year hit. Congratulations. And I have a ton of draft capital this year. I'm trying to pick a direction. I have enough capital to pivot any which way, which, which makes sense. I might lean toward competing for a championship this year, since I can imagine this league being the kind to fold. Okay. So if you're thinking that way, you know, look at it as almost like a redraft league or a one to two year league. So if you can buy some veterans for cheap, like a Mike Evans, go ahead, do it. Like that's going to help you win a championship this year. Um, so take advantage of that. If people are, uh, you know, not valuing these veteran players like Mike Evans, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Devonte Adams, Stefan Diggs. Like these are a lot of the guys that I'm seeing right now that, oh, they're too old. Um, you know, their price is a lot you know, is depressed, you can go ahead and take advantage of that of people. So I, I don't blame me if you, if you did that kind of thing. So, um, all right. So now we're going to go ahead here. We're going to pull up the warp for your league. Uh, so let me go over to here, share my screen, Koopa's warp tool and allow. Okay. So right here, we're going to take a look at your warp for your league here. So I have the right league up, Land of Misfit Fantasy Toys. 
uh, to have the warp up here on the screen. Let me just uh, double check here. Yep, Land of Misfit Toys. Okay, we're on the right page there. So this is the warp for your league. So <clears throat> um, kind of like some of my other team reviews I've done, this is kind of be a little bit similar. Wide receivers and quarterbacks are king in your league. Running backs, um, they're not that far off from receivers, so running back is definitely important. Um, like they're pretty much like all these running backs and receivers are within the air of margin of like, here's 1.9 to 1.8. Like, so it's like a 0.1 difference. So running backs, receivers, quarterbacks are pretty, um, you know, valuable in your league tight end. Like in most of these 1.5 leagues, like your first five or six are important after that, it's a flat, flat ass tier. So if you don't have a top six quarterback, just stream in this tier here and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, looking at, you know, obviously Christian McCaffrey is going to be up here for running back. And then it, you know, it kind of peters down to here, but yeah, I mean, look at how, let me get the tight ends out of here. Um, look at the running backs, just how close they are to the wide receivers. So this is a, this is a really good league in my opinion that I like where there are multiple different ways to build your team. So I like this a lot. Um, so this is a very good league for that. Um, and you can also see here, you get to quarterback 16 at Matt Stafford and it tanks down after that. Boom. I mean, look at how bad some of these quarterbacks were in warp. Um, I mean, I think some of the tight ends were better. Well, not really, but cl pretty close at least. Um, so that tells me in a super flex league, I want to have two top 15 to 16 quarterbacks. I don't need to have, you know, quarterback one and two, but I need to have at least a couple um, pretty solid ones at least. So I like that. And then wide receiver, man, in these leagues where it's just one PPR, um, and you start so many of these wide receivers, they're just king in, in these kind of formats right now. And this kind of just shows it. Uh, that's kind of where you want to be focusing your build of your team. So, you know, CD Lamb was wide receiver one, Tyreek two, Amon Ra was three, Keenan Allen four, AJ Brown five, Mike Evans six, on and on and on. So, yeah, the wide receivers are definitely king um, in this league, especially like. They're over the quarterbacks quite a bit, um, or pretty damn equal. So you see how, so you see how much from there, how much these wide receivers do mean compared um, to the quarterbacks here. So also here, um, want to look at which running backs were here. So Mostert, obviously Travis Etienne, Brees Hall, Rashad White, Joe Mixon, Jameer Gibbs, Alvin Kamara, Derek Henry. Saquon Barkley is the top 10. So there's a couple guys in there that are on the older side that not many people are valuing right now. Derrick Henry's up here. Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara. Um, that was it for the like the older, almost or two. Um, and then you get back here, you got Kyron, James Cook, Bijan, Pollard. Like Pollard's value has gone down quite a bit. Pacheco, Swift is there. His value is not as high as it used to be. Um Austin Eckler, you know, Jerome Ford, the, these guys are guys that you can get at the running back position fairly cheap. So if you do want to make a run at it, by all means, go for it, man. Like if you can get some cheap deals on that, you know, definitely go for it. Um, let's take a look at the roster construction tab. So it's telling you four running backs, five running backs or four quarterbacks. I'm sorry, five running backs, three tight ends seven receivers, uh, take all these with a grain of salt. You may want to optimize differently to account for injuries and league market. So it's basically what I told you. Um, it is showing you that you probably want to have some more running backs um, as well. So running back receiver, and obviously having good quarterbacks are going to be key. Um, tight ends, you just need one or two passable ones that you can kind of stream every single week um, for me. So let's go to available players on warp two. Um this is another one that I like to look at just to kind of see who's available in your league. If there's anybody out here that I would recommend picking up, honestly, no, these are all roster cloggers. So yeah, there's nobody really here. I would pick up off, um, off the waiver wire. So I think you're pretty good there. Um, so let's go ahead and let's pull up your team here and we will switch this out. I'm going to stop that. 
And let's pull up the lab here. So I have your uh, your your league up here, Land of Fit Misfit Toys. Um, here's where you're at. You have the highest percentage here in the league, 215 total. You have the picks. You have a massive, massive, massive advantage on the picks. Players, you're right up there with these top two guys right here. Um, so, yeah, your team is looking super, super, super solid right now. So love that. Let's go ahead. We're going to hit this button here, and we're going to pull up your roster. <clears throat> so we're going to go position by position is usually how I do it. Talk about these players and what I think of your team so far. So right now you have CJ Stroud, quarterback one, uh, one of the top quarterbacks in Dynasty. I also just happen to notice you have Nico Collins and Tank Dell. So you have the triple stack, which I love. Love having triple stacks if I can do it on good offenses. So I think you have one right here. So in that case, like even though CJ Stroud's value right now is through the fucking roof, like he's like quarterback two or three for some people. Um, you know, I've heard Scott Connor and other people talk about they've seen him go at the 102 in fucking startups right now. Even though his value is astronomically through the roof right now, I don't think I'm trading him on this team because I have Nico and Tank, unless I get some crazy four first round value offer for CJ Stroud. And I get a real, you know, a solid quarterback back. So there's no way I'm trading Stroud, especially when I have these two pieces, this is going to make your team go in my opinion um, with that. Um, your other quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson, love having Anthony Richardson um, as one of my quarterbacks. So you did very good there with Stroud and Richardson as your two top quarterbacks. You do have Kirk Cousins as a very, very solid backup. Um, if Richardson, you know, his shoulder does not continue to heal well or he doesn't start the year, whatever it is, um, you have a very solid quarterback, even though he's coming off of his own injury in Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins is been like a top 10 quarterback like eight years in a row when he has played. So Kirk Cousins is a very, very good quarterback three. So your quarterback room, super solid. Uh, Carson Wentz is your other quarterback. Um, I'm fine holding on to Carson Wentz and see what happens. I think he's got a shot to be back in L.A. and, and backing up Matt Stafford. So uh, definitely like holding on to Carson Wentz. So that's a good one. Uh, so overall, your quarterback room for me, very, very solid. Love it. Running back. So you have Brees Hall and Devin Achain. Uh, that's another great two picks there. Awesome. Uh, Brees Hall, top three dynasty running back. Devin Achain's probably in the top five, the six dynasty running backs right now. Um, like I said, the running back warp, Brees Hall makes a massive difference in warp. Devin Achain, if he plays all year and he's healthy, he makes a massive difference in warp. So you have... Two high-end warp running backs as long as they're healthy. So this is exactly what you want to do. You want to have these two high-end warp running backs. You have Tajay Spears. Um, now, with Tajay Spears, I really like him. I want to see what he can do. He's obviously coming um, with basically no ACL in his knee. So he does have like a ticking tie bomb in his knee. But he is looking like he's going to be the guy for the Titans this year. He's also one of the, you know, hot guys to go out and get this summer. Like everyone's going to start touting Tajay Spears. So there may come a point, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, come a point where you want Tajay Spears maybe to trade him. You might be able to pull a first round pick out of somebody for Tajay Spears, even if it's a 2025 first. Um, so there's going to become a point to where, you know, if you can get that kind of value for Tajay Spears because the hype train is out of control, I would go ahead um, and maybe consider moving Tajay Spears if I can get another, you know, very good wide receiver to go with all these flex spots, or I can get another, um, you know, first round pick for the following season. So I like I like having Tajay Spears. He's a good little trade piece right now. Or if nobody reaches that value um, to what you want, if you can't get a 2025 first or something for Tajay Spears, hold him because, I mean, he should have a pretty good year this year. So um, you can go both ways with Tajay uh, there. Antonio Gibson, another guy I really like this offseason. Um, he is a free agent. Well, he's going to probably move on. 
And I think all of us in the fantasy space are hoping, hey, I hope Antonio Gibson can, you know, go to a team who's going to use his skill set properly. That's what I'm hoping for. He is like a, um, you know, like kind of like Ty Montgomery there a couple years ago when he was running the ball. It's kind of the same kind of thing with Antonio Gibson or a Cordero Patterson type. Um, I'm hoping Antonio Gibson can find a nice landing spot. Um, so you have to kind of wait to see for free agency where he lands. But this is a guy I'd love to acquire on all my teams as like almost like a throw in piece if I can get him. So love having Antonio Gibson right now. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, another guy I like holding on to right now, especially with Sean Payton really, really likes this guy. Uh, Payton, you know, he has a knack for finding these types of running backs um, off the scrap heap, basically, and making them into stars. So McLaughlin, definitely a guy I want to hold on to if I can. If somebody comes with, hey, I'll give you my 212, my 211 for Jaleel McLaughlin. See ya. Bye. <laughs> you can have him. But um, if not, I'm totally fine holding on to Jaleel McLaughlin. Josh Kelly, we'll see what happens here with him. He is going to be a free agent. Will Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers bring him back? I'm going to lean towards no. Um, I think the Chargers are going to address running back in a different way. But Josh Kelly's going to be a free agent. Um, he's an any RB on a 53, and he's going to be somebody that lands a job. Like he's a solid NFL player. He's not anything special, but he's a solid player who could come in in a pinch and be a starter if you need him to. Like he was last year with uh, Eckler. So uh, Josh Kelly, I like holding on to him. Elijah Dotson, another running back that I do really like. Um, he showed some flash in the preseason. Didn't get a lot to run in the um, in the the regular season, but Dotson gonna be back with the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh is gonna look at him, and we'll see what happens there. Um, they could completely clean house there, and Dotson becomes irrelevant. Uh, but like I showed you on your uh, warp, the available players on your team, there's not too many running backs available that I saw currently that I would go, Oh, let me drop Elijah Dotson for. So I would hold on to Elijah Dotson right now. Um, and that looks like that's all your running backs. So right now you have two really good running backs. You got Spears and Gibson, Kelly Dotson and uh, McLaughlin. So yeah, that's very solid running back room right now. So wide receiver. So right now you can start three receivers and another three here. Um, I would probably try and you start five to six wide receivers a week. Now, if you have a guy like Tajay Spears, okay, you got to, you know, the warp isn't that big of a difference between those guys. So Tajay Spears, you can start, but ideally I probably want to start five really, really good wide receivers. If I can, um, I don't mind having a running back here or there. Um, if you go with four receivers or five, I don't think it's that big of a difference, uh, but preferably I would want the wide receivers. Uh, so let's look at them. Like I mentioned earlier, you have Nico and Tank to go with your CJ Stroud. So I love that. Um, Nico, I mean, these guys are both very, um, very highly touted right now. And if you, I mean, if you get a, an offer, you can't refuse on them. I get it. Like you're probably going to have to trade them. But as of right now, you have Stroud. You have these two guys. I'm not necessarily looking to break that up. Me personally, just the way I play. Um, if somebody comes with a very good offer with a first round pick for one of these guys, okay. Like Tank Dell, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to have to see what happens there with the leg, but. There's no reason why he can't keep smashing with CJ Stroud. So love that. Zay Flowers, little scary right now with the domestic violence situation. Uh, he might be suspended the first two to four games of the year. So we'll see what the legal process comes out there. Still like Zay Flowers, the player, very good player. So that, I'm fine with that. Christian Watson, very, very high upside player. But we kind of saw what the floor was this year, too. It's a low floor. Um, he, he keeps having these nagging hamstring issues. So hopefully, man, he can just have a healthy off season, work with Jordan Love a little bit more, um, and really 
step up this year for the Packers. So uh, Christian Watson's definitely a guy you can consider as a flex every single week, especially if you're going to start five or six. He's definitely in that threshold of a guy you could start every week, and he could blow up and win you a week. So definitely like having Christian Watson. Uh, scrolling down here some more. So Andre Osavis, like how, holding on to him and seeing what happens there with the Bengals. He could be their third receiver this year with Tyler Boyd, probably moving on as a free agent. Uh, sounds like T Higgins is going to be franchise tagged at worst. So, um, at worst, Osavis is going to be a, uh, or OC Voss, whatever you want to call him, um, is going to be a pretty solid guy that I, I want to hold on to. Um, Jalen Tolbert, another guy that I like. He is kind of buried, though, with um, Gallup there. I don't, I forget if Cooks is a free agent or not. Um, but Tolbert showed enough this year to at least warrant a roster spot for me um, in a very ha- pass you know, very effective pass offing, passing offense this year with Tolbert, uh, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and those guys. Uh, so I definitely like holding on to Tolbert. I think that's a good one. David Bell. Um, as a Browns fan, I think he, I mean, he's like a fourth receiver at best, so probably not a guy I want to hold on to, but seeing as you didn't have a lot of people available in your league anyways he's probably worth just stashing kind of see what happens there people's jones is a free agent he went from the browns to the lions liked the talent a lot but he didn't really do anything this year with deshaun watson when he was in there and he was playing more snaps than amari cooper and the rest of those guys elijah moore and he wasn't really producing so uh Roster clogger for sure, but like I said, there's not really many other guys to pick up, so you kind of just got to have to see what happens here. Terrace Marshall has just been a, a major bust. I get seeing what happens there, but you're you know, if you have to cut him, you have to cut him. Jake Bobo liked you know a couple games and he showed some flashes, not anybody really worth that we saw picking up over him, so I would hold on to him for now. Jalen Guyton. He had his chances last year. He flopped. I would I would cut him. Um, that's a free roster spot for you. Okay, so on to your tight ends now. So you have Tucker Craft, um, who came on last year after Luke Musgrave's injury. If he is your starter, though, that's scary. But I saw you had some other tight ends, so he's probably not like your starter. Still a very good talent, but we'll see what happens there. Um, you just haven't had many, like, two tight end offenses like produce like you know top 12 tight ends consistently like both of them so, like the last one comes to mind is the patriots with gronk and aaron hernandez um so it's hard to have two really good tight ends um in an offense so it's i like holding on the craft like if something happens to musgrave or craft just overtakes him awesome um but as my starter uh, a little skeptical uh, your other tight end. So Jawan Johnson, I think that's a guy you can end up starting uh, early on here. D- uh, Jawan Johnson is a uh, really came on at the end of last year, man. I really, really liked what I saw from him. Uh, and he's going to be back with Derek Carr, new offensive coordinator. So uh, Jawan Johnson might be your week one starter for you. Higby, um, he tore his ACL really late in the year. I think it was, or he had a, a season ending injury. That was bad. He's going to miss, uh, quite a bit. So he is probably going to be a roster clogger for you this year, to be honest. And if I can get anything for him, he would be gone. Elijah Higgins showed some promise, um, towards the end of last year. I don't mind stashing him and seeing what happens there. Hooper and Drew Sample, those are cuts for me. Those guys are roster cloggers. So you could fill those two spots with some running backs or some wide receivers, um, in my opinion. Um, all right, so let's look at your draft picks, man. And you were not kidding. You have the 101, the 102, 103, 105, 106, 108, 110. Um, okay, so what would I do? Um, I think... So you have the top three picks. You have top five, six. I mean, you could lock up the top five of this, the top six of this draft and get five of them 
And you could basically dictate to the 104 guy like who they're going to have to take. So if you go Caleb, Marvin, Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, you're forcing the 104 guy to either pick Drake May or Jaden Daniels, or does he need the wide receiver so bad he goes Odunze, and then you could take the two quarterbacks. Um, if you were to, if you know, we'll, we'll go through all the scenarios here, but if you were to do that, that is how I would play it. And that's how I did it in one of my other leagues where I have all these picks. I get to force what the hell you're taking, basically. So if I were you, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, first three picks, bam. 104, let him take Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whatever. Who cares? 105, I could take the other quarterback or I could take Brock Bowers. Or I could, and 106, I can take Odunze. Um, personally, what I would do is uh, Caleb, Marvin, Neighbors, 104. Let's, they'd say they trade Drake May because he's picked two. I'd go Jaden Daniels and I'd go R- Roma Dunze. 107, let him take whoever, he, if he wants to take Brock Bowers, he takes Brock Bowers. 108, you could. Go JJ McCarthy, who I I really like, or you can go with the next receiver, which Brian Thomas Jr. is looking like he's going to be the fourth receiver, who's really good too. So you have multiple options there um, to really keep a lot of these picks and make them work for you. Like this would be a really really good. Now on the flip side, what can I do with these picks? So taking. Caleb Williams, do you really need him? Not necessarily. Yeah, he would be a nice piece to add to your team, and and you would be set at quarterback for years and years and years um, there, for sure. What can you upgrade, though? Um, you know, if you... Depends on how your your feelings are about Marvin Harrison Jr., and your feelings about Malik neighbors. Like if you think these guys are going to automatically be top 10 dynasty wide receivers, like they're already being valued and you think they're going to produce that way, then sure. Just draft them and move on. But we'll, you know, for Marvin Harrison jr. Let's say if you took him at, at uh, if you took Caleb or Marvin and Marvin was here at one Oh two, what could you get for him? I bet, you know, there's a lot of people where you could go. I I wouldn't be shocked, like, if you could give up 102 and maybe, you know, 302, go get C.D. Lamb, go get um, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Like, I don't think that's crazy. I don't think that's crazy at all, man. I think you could... Marvin Harrison's values right now is so crazy that I think you could get one of those top guys. You could get AJ Brown. You could get Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, you can get one of those guys for the 102 right now. 103, then you could keep that and go neighbors, or I bet you could probably still pull off um, another wide receiver. Okay, so let's let's say with that 102, you get Amon Ross St. Brown. 103, can you pull AJ Brown? Okay, so I'm starting Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, AJ Brown, Christian Watson, or Tajay Spears weekly. And and we still have a shit ton of picks. So you could do that too. That that's another possibility. Um you know, you're going to probably want to pick some of these guys too. Uh, 105, you know, if you take Caleb Williams, 105 and 106 are sitting here. Let's assume 104 takes a quarterback. 105 is the last quarterback. Uh, let's say it's Jaden Daniels. You can go ahead and trade 105, um, the Jaden Daniels pick, and get another receiver or another running back, whatever you want to do. Um, since like your running backs aren't like, um, I don't want to say the greatest, but your depth isn't there. Can I go get Travis Etienne? Can I go get um, 
you know, another one of these high end guys, like with those, one of those picks, can I go get B. John Robinson? Can I go get Jameer Gibbs? Like who are warp difference makers? Can I get one of those guys too? Like it doesn't have to be the receiver because we showed you the running backs where they matter. Can I go get Christian McCaffrey? That's another one. Like, can I give up the 105 for Christian McCaffrey right now? I would do it, especially with these picks and your team and the way you're building it. I think that's another really good possibility, man. If you rolling out Brees Hall, Christian McCaffrey, Devin a chain down here, you get uh CD Lamb or uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, AJ Brown with those picks, man. Holy shit. Your, your team could absolutely smash this league. Absolutely. Um, you know, 106, 108. You know, you can trade these guys for veterans as well. I mean, you're just kind of looking at that market. Like I've seen 106 for Chris Olave. Can I do that? Can I do the 105 for Chris Olave? You know, there, there's there's different ways to to do this. Um one, you know, 110, 108. Like, can I get can I trade 110 or 202? Probably 110, I'm guessing. Well, eh, I guess it depends on your league. Can I go get Travis Kelsey and just absolutely secure my tight end spot? Or can I get, you know, one of these picks with a Sam Laporta or, you know, and then really solidify that tight end position? And then you don't have to worry about it. Like, I get that warp difference maker at tight end. I already got warp difference makers everywhere else. I think that's another possibility you can do with, with these back end picks. So you have a multiple ways, man, to, to really do it. You can make a couple picks and then trade a couple picks and see what you can get. Like maybe where I would start personally is can I fish around 105, 106, 108 and see if I can pull out, you know, can I trade 105 for a Chris Olave? Um, can I trade them for a Jalen Waddle? Uh, you know, those types of, of difference maker type players. Can I go trade 108 for Travis Kelsey? Can I trade 110 for Travis Kelsey? Um, 108, maybe 106 for Laporta. Can I go get one of those guys? So that's kind of what I would do with these picks here, the 106, 108, 110. And then I can decide, hey, I'm I know what I'm doing here. You know, I get, let's say I get Alave and Kelsey. Okay. Come up here. We're starting CJ Stroud, Brees Hall, Devin A Chain, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers. Um you know, your Travis Kelsey would be here. Chris Olave's here. Christian Watson's here. Tajay Spears is here. Anthony Richardson's here. Oh, yeah, right. And then I got 102, 103, 104, or 102, 103, 105. Oh, yeah, I got Marvin Harrison Jr. I could throw in here. I got Malik Neighbors I can throw in here. I got um, Caleb Williams I can throw in here. And then 105. I got Jaden Daniels on my bench, or I can trade Jaden Daniels for another stud player. And you could absolutely rock this team out, dude. Uh, that's that's what I would do. I would fish these 105 or the 106, 108, 110 around to see what elite players I could get. Can I get Olave? Can I get um yeah, I'm just I'm gonna pull it up on my phone here. I'm gonna pull up our uh our shit rankings right now on our, on my phone real quick. And just to kind of give you some names, cause uh, they're not all coming to my head at the moment. So looking at the wide receivers here, Garrett Wilson's another one. Puka Nakua is another one. Can I, you know, one Oh six for Puka Nakua Tyree kill. I absolutely love still. Can I trade one Oh six, one Oh five for Tyree kill? Can I go get Chris Olave, Jalen Waddle, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Pittman Jr.? You have Anthony Richardson. Can I trade the 108, the 106 for Pittman? That's another good one. DJ Moores. Um, you already have Nico Collins and Zay Flowers and Tank Dell and these guys. Like, there's so many different options you can do there with those picks. 
That's insane, man. And then you still have 202, 205. You can use these as trade pieces too. Um, or just draft guys. Like in this range, I would I think you could probably hit some of the top running backs in this class, whatever you know they come off at. And you could really add some really good depth to your running backs. Um, you know, these later picks are kind of just whatever. You're just gonna take, you know, I want to be, I don't want I'm not taking tight ends. I'll be taking running backs and probably some solid quarterbacks like these wide receivers down here. Yeah. There's a once in a while you get a Puka Nakua, you can get in round three or four, but it's not, it's so hard to predict that kind of stuff. So um, unless there's somebody down here, that's a receiver that you really like, um, they would have to hit a roll really quickly and flourish kind of like tank Dell did Puka Nakua did, you know, if they don't have that opportunity right away, like I'm using these picks on running backs and backup quarterback types that I like. Um, and there's a lot of quarterbacks in this class that I really do like. So that's what I'd be doing with these back end picks though. Um, but yeah, man, with your, your treasure trove of, uh, high draft picks here, man, you dictate everything right now. You get to decide where this league goes. So if you can talk to some, some owners and see what you can do, man. If I can pull off an Amon Ra, can I pull off a Garrett Wilson? Can I pull off Michael Pittman Jr. Um, with a couple of these picks? And I would just be out offering up one for one straight up um, and see, you know, if you can get a couple of these guys. Maybe start at the high end with the Laves, Amon Ra, AJ Brown, those types, and see if somebody would bite on this 106 for one of those guys. Or would they bite on 105 for one of those guys? I'd be fine trading the 105 because with one of these picks, you're going to get Caleb Williams. So if I miss out on Jaden Daniels and Drake May, oh well. Because you already have Cousins, Richardson, Stroud, Caleb. So 105, um, I would start with the 106 and see what you can do there. But then if they ask for the 105 for Garrett Wilson, Olave, Amon Ra, A.J. Brown, one of those guys, okay, do it. Whatever. You can have it. Um, even if they want 105 and your 302 to do it. Okay, here you go. Like these picks 302 to 502 do not matter to me at all. Um, you know, even if you give them 205 and move move back to the 212, you move down seven spots or something. Okay, awesome. Here you go. I, I would do that too. So that's what I would be doing with this team, man. Really solid team. Uh you you should be able to win it all this coming year. If you can do a couple of those things that we just talked about there, along with your draft picks, man, you could be starting weekly. Nico Tank, Zay Flowers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Chris Olave. You could be starting that every week. Oh, and then I add in Travis Kelsey here. I'm starting Brees Hall, Devin Achain, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson. Like You are killing it in this team. Uh, so yeah, that is a, that's an awesome team, man. You, you've done a very good job for yourself. You hit on a lot of good picks. Uh, you have all that draft capital, use it wisely, man, because you could, like I said, you can make all those picks if you want, but I think that the smart play is to use that leverage and go get veterans because everyone's going to have rookie fever here and you don't even have to do it like right this minute. Um, I think you probably want to do it sooner rather than later so you can get a plan in your head. But that's that would be my plan. Um, try and trade those middle 105, 106, 108s, 110s. Uh, see if I can get the veterans there and then, you know, whatnot. I'll, I'll you know, may, go from there. But you, can, uh, you could definitely really do some damage with this team, man. So appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate you bringing this one to me, man. Because this is a this is a really good team. You you have a really good shot here to win the title. So, Sean, I appreciate you, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can win this league. Let us know how it goes for sure. And uh, if you guys want a Dynasty Team Review as well, DynastyTeamReview.com, right there at the bottom of the screen, you can sign up. I can do a um, a review for you, Mike, Adam, Koopa. Any one of us can do the review. If you want both of us on there, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, if you want to join us, you can join us on it as well. So that's always a cool thing as well. So um, appreciate all of you guys for joining us um, as, as always. And if you need the review, you know the link right there below. So uh, until next time, guys, we will see you. Have a good one.